How's it going to you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. I want to show you how to install an exterior disconnect. This is most relevant for AC units, and that's going to be either a mini split system or a traditional AC compressor. I have a bit of a hybrid. You're going to see it's a 36,000 BTU electric heat pump, and it actually feeds a Mr. Cool hyperheat universal setup that plugs into my existing ductwork. It's a really cool unit that's going to be a swap for an old oil burning furnace. So I need to provide a 240 volt. 50 amp circuit out to the heat pump and I can use the 60 amp disconnect because remember this is not your circuit breaker. I will have my square D QO 50 amp circuit breaker which will be feeding that circuit and then I just need a disconnect that is 50 amps or greater so the 60 amp will do. Additionally, we'll be using 6.2 Romex. So this is gonna be six gauge. It's gonna have two conductors and then a bare 10 gauge ground within it. So that's gonna be running from my service panel out to the disconnect. I'm gonna use a whip here, which is gonna be using a six foot liquid tight, and it has eight gauge conductors. So I will have to swap those out to make sure I'm six gauge all the way out. And then some cable clamps, a four by four metal box, and a little bit of conduit. I wanna test out these little sim push. They're kind of shark bite, but for conduit. So I wanted to test those out with a few fittings that I need, and I'll show you how I'll be routing that through the brick foundation wall. So let's jump into it, starting off by drilling a hole through that brick foundation. Okay, so I'm trying to get my bearings here. I have a reference point from inside the basement, and I know I wanna come over four of these blocks. Then I know my disconnect is gonna be mounted right at this height and I wanna roughly know where then my wire's gonna land so it makes sense for where I wanted to route it. In terms of how big of a hole, I know that I'm gonna run this through the back of the disconnect housing. And I want the hole to actually accommodate this so I can run conduit through the brick wall. So that is why I picked an inch and nine sixteenths for my masonry hole saw. And I have a pilot bit here with which will hopefully help me reduce blowout by drilling from both sides. Then we'll go ahead and mark the center of that hole. So now we have the hole marked and we'll start to drill from the outside. Now we are using an SDS plus bit with a rotary hammer drill. This is gonna make your life a whole lot easier than trying to do it with a standard cordless drill that has the hammer option. It might be worth renting if you do not have it. And you can either go with the smaller SDS Plus or even up to the SDS Max as well. So that was definitely a fail in terms of reducing the blowout. This type of brick block is super brittle. So if you wanna avoid this, maybe get a spotter, somebody on the inside, and once that pilot bit goes through, stop, jump on the inside, and then use that pilot hole to then drill from the inside out, trying to reduce this blowout. So once I'm done, I'm gonna to have to patch this up and then repaint it just so it isn't as noticeable as it is now. So what I'm gonna do is this conduit, I did cut it, I'm taking a LB body, and remember, these are just push fittings. So I'll push that in, take another piece of conduit with a bushing on the top, and then my six gauge is gonna come through my floor joist. This bushing is gonna protect it as it goes into the conduit, and then that's gonna bring me through this body. I can pull that wire out and then shoot it out to our disconnect. So I'm gonna put this together and then we'll start routing our six gauge roll necks. So now actually running the Romex, I'll start off by using my impact driver in a three quarter inch Irwin bit. And if you need more of a reference, look right below the video, you'll see a link over to our Amazon store. In the electrical section, you'll see these Irwin bits that we're using, which come in super handy. And I just bought that set of six to cover all my different projects. But you also th see things like the Nipix hybrid wire strippers that I use for all my different electrical projects. And of course, my favorite, which are the Wago 221 lever nuts that come in super handy for DIYers on electrical projects. 
And now we'll go ahead and drill all the way through all these joists. Just make sure when you're drilling, you know what's on the back side. You can see I had 12-2 Romex there and a PEX water pipe. So you don't want to damage those when you're drilling your holes. 6-2 Romex can be a little stubborn when you're fishing it by yourself, but it's not a big deal as you just take it a few joists at a time, pulling out your slack and then pulling it through across the room. I try to go over things like this ductwork here. So you might have to just do one at a time, making sure you get everything over any obstacles that you're looking to avoid for your run. And then now once I get it all the way over to the one floor joist, you can see right in the middle of the screen is the conduit. So I'm gonna fish this again over the ductwork and then down to that conduit and fish it through past the bushing into our LB body. And now this is where that LB comes in so handy because now you're able to get your wire all the way pulled through your run and you can insert that through the conduit out to your disconnect. So it's much easier trying to get around to 90 with one of these LBs and it's just gonna help the pull a lot more. Should be noted, Usually when you're running conduit, you'd be using THHN wire here because most of ours is ran through the floor joist. I'm using Romex. Just check your local codes. In most wet areas, Romex is not allowed to go through a uh, conduit like this. So just in general, you should be checking your local codes because there's a wide range. You could be in a rural community, like a lot of towns around where I live, where there's not really any permitting office and there's no inspections within that municipality. Or you could be in somewhere like Chicago where everything needs to be ran through conduit. So it is up to you doing these projects if you're taking them on yourself that you check what code is applicable to your area and even proactively talk to your inspector so you know what you're facing with this project. So we'll button this guy up here and then we'll go out to the disconnect box and we'll go ahead and land those wires and get our whip connected up. So then out the disconnect, we have our two six gauge conductors ready to go for each phase and then a 10 gauge ground, bare ground coming out. Now in the middle section here are gonna be the two line sides. So that is gonna be this black conductor to the outside, white conductor to the inside. You could flip flop those around, it doesn't matter and we'll tighten those up. And then the load, that going to the AC unit, we'll go ahead and go to the outside. That is how these disconnects work, right? It makes continuity between the line and the load. And in this down position, you can read on. That is when continuity is made. So you press that in, that's gonna connect it up. Your unit's gonna be on. And then when you need to service it, you just pull it out and you can flip it upside down where it's not making continuity, but you're able to store this in here so you don't lose it. So it should be noted, as you're torquing these down, go ahead and work around that conductor a little bit. Because there is stranded wire in there, you wanna work it around and do several cycles of tightening because when you work it around, that will loosen things up. And then that'll allow you to torque it down a little bit more. So now we'll bring the liquid tight whip that will go from the disconnect up to our AC unit. So we'll just get this knockout out of here. And then I will angle this down just to help reduce the amount of moisture that can get into that fitting and use my little three quarters of an inch wrench here.
So we'll finish up our outside install by landing our two conductors, our six gauge conductors and our 10 gauge ground here at the Mr. Cool unit. Now these have small screw terminals with a plate. I do not recommend just running the stranded right underneath that. It doesn't make for a good connection. What I like to do is install some lugs. So my two conductors have lugs, which will make a great connection to here. And then I have a little mechanical connection lug you'll see for the ground. So that's how I will connect up the wires to this Mr. Cool unit. And then once we're done with this, we'll go ahead and finish everything up at the service panel and we should be up and running. So at the panel, I have my new Romex up top coming through the large central conduit. I have my two six gauge conductors that I'll run to this side where I will then be installing a 50 amp square DQO breaker on the right hand side. Then I'll land my 10 gauge ground. Right now this panel has all the grounds on the left hand side, all the neutrals on the right hand side. Now this is a main panel, so I can go to either side because the neutral and the ground are actually bonded together. So I don't need to keep them separated like you do with a sub panel. As always, safety first, probably even before you get the cover off, let's go ahead and hit our main disconnect. And what I do like about the new panels is we do have covers for our main lugs off of our two different phases. So these yellow conductors will help to make it safer to work inside the panel. Because remember, even when you hit this main disconnect, the main conductors coming from your meter base, those are still live. That isn't gonna neutralize those because that's coming straight from the meter base. And you are just neutralizing the two bus bars for each phase that go down through your panel. So let's go ahead and land these three wires and then we'll test things out. Now we'll go ahead and place our new 50 amp. And I haven't mentioned it yet, but since we're using 6-2, we have a black conductor, we're used to that being hot, and then we have a white conductor, we're used to that being neutral. But because we're using the two 120 phases, the white is actually our second phase. Sometimes you would have that as red. For instance, if you had a 50 amp oven outlet, that's four prong, where it has the two 120 phases, the two hot conductors, it has a neutral and it has a ground. So in this case, our white is equivalent to the red here for our second 120 phase, and that is what gives us 240 volts across the two different phases. So now everything is wired up, and then let's test our work. I'll move my clamp meter so we can get the multimeter functionality. Then we'll go ahead and turn on our breaker. Black probe goes to the neutral, which is actually grounded at the main panel. Then we'll test this, getting 119.4. So our first phase looks good. We'll go ahead and test the second phase, 119.3, looking good. And then we'll move that black probe and see across the phases we should see 238. So everything's looking good here at the panel. And now we have our new 50 amp circuit up and running for the AC unit. Now this is part of a much larger DIY project where I'm putting in this three ton unit from Mr. Cool. The thing that's different about this Mr. Cool is a lot of us are familiar with their DIY friendly mini split systems, but this is part of their universal lineup that plugs into your ductwork. Thus I have my cold air return and then my ductwork going out the top. So I've swapped out an old oil burning furnace for this new setup finishing off the install. And if you guys wanna see the start to finish of this installation, it is a monster video, probably an hour or more long. Check out this video right here. You'll see this full process, and then you'll be able to assess, is this a feasible option for my home or should I hire it out to a professional where you can make that educated decision? So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.